Welcome to this Wednesday evening service and thank you for joining us online. And on these Wednesday evenings, I always like to start the service with a time of prayer. What would it be? You know, what, what we pray is what we become. It's kind of what shapes us, what molds us. If you want to really see your life grow and transform, then begin to pray, but perhaps pray the answers. Pray what you're wanting to see God do. Pray what you're believing He is working in your life by His Spirit. Oh, Father, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. This my soul knows very well from Psalm 139. You see, when you begin to pray that, you're, you're receiving within yourself the life-giving, positive Word of God. And you see, our inward man needs to be cultured over time to become more positive because that's what faith is. Faith is believing in God who is good and whose mercies never fail. They are His compassions. They never fail. They're new every morning. And, you know, that's Lamentations 3, where we get that beautiful song, Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have need of. Thine hand is provided. But right there, think about it. Do you have needs emotionally, spiritually, mentally? I have needs. Oh, I, <laughs> I have needs. And, oh yes, I have needs, folks. I, I need to be enriched. The more you see by the Word and the Spirit, the riches that are available to us in Christ, the more you begin inwardly to say, Oh, Father, I thank you for the riches of the glory of your grace that you are conforming me and transforming me. Come on, let's just start praying. That you are transforming me and conforming me into your image by your Spirit at work in me. Father, I believe you're able. You're able to do super abundantly above all that I could ever ask, hope, or pray. And I thank you, Father, that you have given me the Spirit. You've given us the Spirit of faith, that as it is written, so we believe and so we speak, Father. We speak after your will for our lives. We speak after your nature and character in our lives. And we thank you, Father, for giving us an positive, cheerful uh, nature and character, Father, that we are optimists, positive, cheerful in our nature. In other words, we give you praise, Father, for your grace. We give you praise for transforming us, Father. We bless you with our whole heart and our whole mind. Oh, Father, I'm so grateful, Father, that you yourself are working in me your perfect will. Oh, Father, that you are enabling me to do that which is pleasing in your sight. I believe, Father, you are so good to us. You're so good to us, Lord. You cover us with your Holy Spirit's presence and comfort us in our sorrows and weaknesses and shortcomings. You restore us when we have suffered failure in our human nature. Father, I thank you. You're so good to us. You're so merciful in your grace. I believe it, Father. I believe it in the name of Jesus. You know, dear friends, I want to encourage you. Be somebody who prays. Praying is one of the most wonderful things. When the disciples looked at the life of Jesus, they didn't ask him, Lord, teach us to preach. They said, Lord, teach us to pray. Because there they saw the greatest grace and the greatest glory in his life where his face became radiant and his clothes became white as snow. Read it in Luke chapter 9, verse 30, 29, I think it is. And here the Lord's appearance was transformed in his time of communion and fellowship with the Father. And hear this, please. It's in your time of communion and fellowship with the Father that you're transformed, that you're conformed into his nature. And let the Holy Spirit give music to surround your heart and mind. You know, what do you do when you feel the pain of your feeble, feeble human nature? And maybe oh, you said things, you know, in your frustration or in a moment of being provoked that you then go, oh Lord, I shouldn't have said that. And the pain of that human nature can be so painful, the weakness of it, the failing of it. What do you do? The Bible says in Lamentations, when you're feeling the discipline upon your human nature, 
In other words, God's spirit say, no, don't think that, don't talk that, don't act that. That's the discipline upon your human nature of God's spirit. When you feel that, lift your heart and your hands to God and say, Father, I'm yours, Lord. Save me. That's one little verse out of Psalm 119. I'm yours. Save me. Just pray that little prayer. I'm yours, Father. I'm yours, Father. I'm all yours. Save me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Conform me to your image by your spirit and power at work in me. And you pray like that, I guarantee you that feeling of despair will immediately dissipate. It will evaporate in the light of God's spirit and power that you are welcoming into your spirit. I want to encourage you, keep your doors wide open to the Lord Jesus. He's such a faithful savior. He's such a merciful and compassionate, great high priest, whoever lives to make intercession. And he will always be there for you. Never give in to your feelings of anger with yourself or pride or disgust. No, throw that off. It will lead you to darkness and emptiness. And throw that off, those feelings, and put on the feeling of grace and mercy through your communion with the Father and His Son, Jesus. You know, it is real, folks, what I'm talking to you about. It's what I have to live and not have to live, want to live, can't live without every day. I, I do this, what I'm telling you. I live this, what I'm telling you. And it's real and it's wonderful. And you know, I love that scripture. I don't know why any preacher would ever say that you never have to apologize after you become a Christian. You know, I mean, I've been married for over 37 years, almost 38 years. and. I don't know how many times I've had to say to Virginia, oh darling, please forgive me, I shouldn't have said it that way, or I shouldn't have responded like that, or shouldn't have acted. You know, I personally think that's healthy to keep the house clean. I, I believe it's healthy to, to take care of your rubbish and, and get rid of it. You know, some people, they, they just want to think it away. No, you've got to clean it up sometimes, but you've got to go and apologize, and that's healthy. And the same is true with you, you and your Heavenly Father. And I love that scripture in 1 John chapter 1, that if we do something that's wrong, then, the, then we can say, Father, forgive us, and He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. He takes the consciousness of it away so that it doesn't come back again and try to repeat itself or doesn't come back into another conversation and try to create some argument. Oh, friends. Keep your heart clean, keep your mind clean, keep your whole soul clean from the mistakes of yesterday. Live clean. And one of the ways to do that is by meditating on God's Word. You know, it says in Psalm 119 verse 1, Blessed is the man who is blameless in his ways, for he greatly delights in the laws of God. The way to keep your heart clean is just meditate on the Word of God. And let the Holy Spirit give you scriptures. You know, I, First, First Thessalonians 5 verse 23, God is faithful, who will sanctify your whole spirit, soul, and body, verse 24, and he who is faithful always do, will also do it. That scripture has so helped me when I felt that I was still not totally one with the Lord in my heart and my mind, and I constantly had that feeling, oh Lord, I'm not one with you, and I would pray that, and Jesus, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 29 through 31 says, Jesus has been made by God unto us sanctification. And it says wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption so that if anyone boasts, he might boast in the Lord. I mean, the Lord wants you to every day come into his presence and say, wow, Lord, you're so good to me. You're so wonderful to me. I thank you for making me new in Christ every day, Father. You know, I want to encourage you, have a cheerful disposition. Today I want to talk to you about having a cheerful disposition instead of giving way to a spirit of complaining. And I know that complaining can be quite natural to the human fallen nature, to the world that we're living in. But the Lord needs to keep us from that spirit, folks. We're not of this world. We're of the kingdom of our Heavenly Father in heaven. We don't belong to this world. And therefore, that spirit of complaining should not be in our nature. We should really see it as sin. I mean, the Bible calls it sin, and we should too. In other words, some falling short of God's glory. That's not what I'm meant to be like. 
So I want to start with you out of Psalms, and it's a very short little psalm. It's right in front of the mammoth, amazing Psalm of David, Psalm 118, but I want to read to you Psalm 117. It only has two verses. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Loud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Oh, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. That psalm can set you into a place of prayer where you begin to worship God, praise Him, worship Him for His merciful kindness that is so immeasurably great that the heavens cannot contain it. The height and depth and the breadth and length of it cannot be fathomed. It's beyond measure. Oh, I just love the merciful kindness of the Lord towards me and His truth endures forever. In other words, it's always real to me. It's, it's always real. It's an always a living experience. I want to encourage you to live within this. You see, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18, Rejoice always, verse 16. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. You know, I once read about Smith Wigglesworth, who was a great man from Bradford, who became a, a phenomenal apostle of the Lord in his later years. And he uh, once said that he never prayed much longer than a half an hour at a time. But then he hardly ever went without prayer for half an hour. So he might not have prayed long, but he prayed all the time. And it says, pray without ceasing. And then here comes verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if somebody would wonder, if somebody would ask you, what's God's will for your life? Is that in everything I give thanks? In everything. You see, that is such a phenomenal, powerful shield. When no matter what you go through, you say, Lord, I thank you that you're always with me. I thank you that you always love me. I thank you, Father, that you watch over me and keep me and uphold me and strengthen me. Oh, that you, Father, bring me through by your amazing grace. That I may give you the praise for all you've done, Lord, and what I'm going through. You see, that's giving thanks. You see how simple it is to always give thanks, even when things are not nice? To always give thanks is such a good way to protect and to guard your heart. Let me read you one more scripture here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling and fault-finding and complaining against God and one another and questioning and doubting among yourselves. Let me read that again. Do all things without grumbling, <clears throat> without fault-finding, grumbling. Mm. You know, you can get attitudes, behaviors that are formed by grumbling, fault-finding, complaining. You can pull your eyes at people in a disgusting way, irritating way. Do you know that grumbling and fault-finding and complaining can shape you and form you and give you negative unkind, unfriendly, unhappy dispositions. I don't know about you, but I don't want to learn those. I want to unlearn those if I have any. You know, I used to, Virginia would say, honey, you're looking so angry. And I, I went, oh, wow, okay, I'm, I'm not angry. Uh, okay, I have to kind of think, what do I need to do to change it? And I would start praying and say, Lord, you've got to fix me. You see, and, and it's true, when I was younger, I was a very angry individual. I was just born with that kind of weakness and shortcomings, and the Lord had to transform me. And He could do it for you. He could do it, and this is what we're talking about today. And He says, why do you want to get rid of those dispositions of complaining, grumbling, fault-finding? 
doubting and, and, and being suspicious and assumptions, presumptions about people, you know? Negative, in other words. You know, that you don't believe the best about people. Why do you want to get rid of it? Well, here's the next verse. That you may show yourself to be blameless and guiltless, innocent, uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable, in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation, spiritually perverse, among whom you are seen as bright lights, stars or beacons shining out clearly in a dark world. Do you see that? That you shine. You have to tell your face sometimes, come on, rejoice always, come on. Pray without ceasing. Come on, in everything give thanks. This is the will of God concerning you. So that you may shine and be radiant in the day in which you're living, in your disposition. I want to take you to Exodus chapter 16. Because you see the Lord <clears throat> was taking his people, Israel, out of bondage where they had been for over 400 years. <clears throat> Excuse me, and he took them out of that place by great miracles and signs and wonders to prove to them and to the whole world, I am the Lord God Almighty. There is none beside me, and you are my people called to represent me in all the earth. You are the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My promise to bless you and to make you a source of my blessing to all humanity is upon your life. And the Lord was calling his people out. Those whom he had predestined to be called out, he also called, right? He had told Moses in chapter <clears throat> 15 and, and other places there in Genesis that he would bring his people out of the land of bondage into the land of promise that he had shown to Abraham. So those whom he had predestined, they weren't born yet. He already had said what he was going to do with them, just like you and me. We are called out of the world to enter into our heavenly home to which we are predestined, where Jesus now is living to intercede for you and me so that we may have a warm welcome when we come up to our heavenly Father. Oh, what a joy, what a joy, right? And so the Lord had by his mighty power brought them out and he brought them to a place, three days travel, uh, where the water was bitter, called Merah. And there he, by miracle, made the water sweet for them to drink. And the water actually was very good for them, but the taste of it was hard to bear. Sometimes, folks, when we have been too much like the world, listen closely, when we've been in the world and we come out of the world, that which is healthy and good for us can maybe not taste so good to begin with. Why? We're so used to drinking the poisonous, dark nature of the world. The gossips, the envy, the strife, the jealousy, the lust, the fear, the hatred, the bitterness, the, the nature of the world, we're used to drinking from that. And then we are needing to drink from mercy and forgiveness and forbearance and long sufferance and goodness and truth and joy and love for our enemies and blessings for those who curse us and that can maybe not taste so good to begin with. And so the Lord sweetened it for them by the cross. Oh, what a powerful example that Jesus took the sting of death away in his suffering and now in his sweet divine nature imparts into us this new life. It's so, so powerful examples. And after this experience, the Lord made a covenant with them there in Genesis 15, 26 and said, I am the Lord that heals you, that you will not suffer any of the diseases that are common to the world is because I am the Lord, your healer. And the Lord made a covenant with them. If you listen to me and do what I instruct you and walk in my ways, then none of these things will come upon you. And then he brought them <clears throat> to a place called Elam where there were 70 palm trees and there were 12 wells and he nourished them and lavished them with the abundance in preparation to bring them through the wilderness so that they could have faith. The Heavenly Father takes care of us. The Heavenly Father provides for us. The Heavenly Father watches over us. And as they came out of Elam into the wilderness, look what happened. This is Exodus chapter 16. And they journeyed from Elam 
and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, where the Lord met them in glory and splendor. On the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt, then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, <clears throat> when we sat by the pots of meat and when we had bread to the full. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. I mean, it's, it's, it's like unimaginable that they would choose slavery for pleasure. The pleasure of having a bit of meat to eat and bread to eat, they would choose slavery instead of trusting and waiting on God. You know, and this is what we all must learn. It says in Hebrews 11 that Abraham would have had opportunity to return back to the familiar things of the world where he came from if he would have looked back to it but he steadfastly kept looking to that which God had prepared for him. And you know, friends, I want to encourage you, the world has nothing to offer you. It's dead in sin and trespasses. You've been made alive in Christ. You've been brought into a new life. You've given up sorcery. You've given up evil, sinfulness, watching of witchcraft in movies. You've given up immorality, sex outside of marriage, you've given up drunkenness, you've given up stealing and lying in the way you do business and so forth. You've given up the ways of sin of this world to embrace the ways of the Heavenly Father. And the Lord wants you to learn to drink out of the well of His salvation with joy. He wants you to drink out of this new life with pleasure where you be, learn to love like He loves, where you learn to bless like He blesses, where you learn to give like He gives, where you learn to live like He lives. Amen? And when they came out, they had a moment of hunger, and I've talked to you about this recently on the Wednesday nights, and they complained. Complaining is such a dark nature to have, folks. I want to encourage you, don't, don't let, let Jesus set you free from it. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much to gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for He hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? You know, many times we can have such bad behaviors against one another when the real issue is our relationship with God. I don't want to have a bad attitude towards my wife, Virginia, because there's some unresolved issue in me or some want or some need. And I lay that upon her when God says, I'll meet all your needs. I don't want to have a, I don't want her to feel like a failure. You know, I don't, complaining is what makes, is what causes you to make other people feel like failures. And, and friends, that is not the nature of the Lord. That's the nature of the enemy. That's the nature of Satan. And, and we need to rid ourselves of these ways that are contrary to the nature that God gives us through Jesus. This shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and in morning bread to the full, for the Lord hears your complaints which you make against Him. Uh, uh, and what are we? Your, uh, your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spoke to Aaron, saying to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight they shall eat 
night meat and in the morning be filled with bread and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And so it was quails came, which taste like chicken. The quails came up at the evening covering the camp and in the morning the dew lay around in the camp and, and he gave the bread which they called man or what is it? You know, the Lord was showing them here, come on, trust me, rely upon me, depend upon me. Don't complain, but trust. You see what the real issue is? When we have a negative, complaining, begrudging uh, attitude, and we may lay that upon our loved ones around us. Oh, you never, and you always, and why don't you? And, and you know, that negative, making people feel like failures, that complaining spirit. It, it, it's sin, folks. It's the nature of sin. And I say this to you, not to condemn you, but to say, let's leave it behind. Let's cast it off. Let's repent of it. Let's say, Lord, I, I, I want to bless you with my whole heart. I don't want to have a spirit that acts like you don't care about me and that you're not able to meet my need. I want to have a spirit that says, Father, I thank you that you will sort this. I trust you. I know you love me. You've been so good to me. You see the difference? That there is a spirit of grace within our hearts because you know the scripture says, if I go with you to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and that shows you the importance of what I'm sharing with you with what I'm going to say to you next. Verse 5 and 6 and then 10 and 11. But with most of those children of Israel in the wilderness that I just read to you about from Acts 16, Exodus 16, God was not well pleased. And their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. They all died in the wilderness. Now these things become our examples to the intent that we, verse 11, uh, verse 10, should not complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. All these things happened to them as examples that they were written for our admonition upon whom the end of the age has come. So the Lord shows us these things, not to make those people look bad, folks. No, that's not God's way. But He shows us these things to admonish us, to say, don't follow their way, because they never got rid of it. You see, you cannot just say, yeah, but Pastor, you don't, I mean, that irritated me. So, because tomorrow it's something else, tomorrow it's something else. You have to decide, no, no, I will not embrace a spirit of complaining. I will not embrace a spirit of criticism and negativism. I want to show you two more things here. Two more things. This is Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23, okay? And I'll read to you from the Amplified Translation and, and just listen for a moment, okay? And I start at verse uh, 29 of Proverbs 23. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness and dimness of eyes? Those who tarry long at the wine, those who go and seek and try mixed wine, do not look at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in a wine glass, when it goes slow, uh, when it goes down smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Under the influence of wine, your eyes will behold strange things and loose women, and your mind will utter things turned to the wrong way, untrue, incorrect, Petulant. Yes, you will be as an you will be as unsteady as he who lies down in the midst of the sea, as open to disaster as he who lies upon the top of a mast. You will say, "They struck me, 
but I was not hurt. They beat me as with a hammer, but, it did, but I didn't feel it. When shall I awake? I will crave and seek more wine and escape reality. Who has woe? Who is complaining? People that give themselves over to alcohol. And I want to encourage you, don't be one of those people. Don't yield yourself over to, to drunkenness and cause yourself to become somebody who can have such a complaining, low nature that you forget. I'm born again. You forget. I've been bought with a price to redeem me from these behaviors, from these cantankerous, negative, complaining, angry fits. I've been bought free from this. How can I return to such behavior? No, no, in Jesus' name, Lord. I'll put it away by your help and grace. And I'll tell you, the Holy Spirit will help you to put away wine from your mouth and to not yield yourself anymore to its intoxication and its deceitfulness that it promises you pleasure when it gives you nothing but misery in the end. No, dear friends, do not look for that kind of pleasure. Real pleasure is to be found with the Lord. Listen to this in closing. This is Jude, verse 16 through 21. These are murmurers grumblers who complain of their lot in life, going after their own desires, controlled by their passions. Their talk is boastful and arrogant, and they claim to admire men's persons and pay people flattering compliments to gain advantage. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions which were made by the apostles, the special messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. They told you beforehand that in the last days, in the end times, there will be scoffers who seek to gratify their own unholy desires, following after their own ungodly passions. It is these who are agitators, setting up distinctions, causing divisions, merely sensual creatures, carnal, worldly-minded people, devoid of the Holy Spirit, and destitute from the higher spiritual life that we have in Jesus Christ. But you, but you, beloved, build yourself up, founded upon your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, my friends. Let's rise higher today. Let's rise higher. Let's rise higher and let's come out of the murky waters of complaining, of self-indulgence, of greed, of lust and passions that lurk within our nature and seek to cause us to grumble and complain and press, press for a way of living that is against God. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome it with good the goodness of the Lord. His mercies are great. His mercies are phenomenally great to take us out of all that lowness and all that pulling and pushing of our sinful nature into the joy of Christ's holy, heavenly nature. Oh, where we're caught up with Him in the heavenly realms and live in the joy of His spirit and power and become gentle and meek and full of goodness and joy. Guard yourself and keep yourself in the love of our Heavenly Father and expect and patiently wait for the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ that will be revealed to you at His appearing. Oh, my friends, I just, I just want to encourage you. Join me, join me by putting away all grumbling and complaining. I'm about everything about your lot in life. It's the spirit of this world. It's the spirit of this world. Be thankful. Look at the bread you eat and say, Lord, thank you for the food that I'm about to receive. Look at the clothes you wear and say, thank you, Lord, for taking care of me. Look at your maybe the areas where you still need financial provision. Say, thank you, Lord. The gold and silver is yours. I thank you that you meet these needs. 
be thankful. This is the will of God. Let me read you just one more verse here. Be anxious, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your kindness, your gentleness be known to all because the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Lord Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on them. Meditate on them. Oh, I need to guard my heart, folks, sometimes. The enemy will shoot little fiery darts of thoughts at me and try to get me to think on them and try to make me in that, cause me to be that complaining. Oh, no way in Jesus' name. I can't do it. I hate it. It's sin to me. And I, 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 I want to know it for what it is and not just let it overtake me without me realizing it. I want to be on the watch and start guard against it with this spirit of thanksgiving in my heart to guard me. Oh, it's the spirit of thanksgiving that will guard you from the complaining, the cheerful disposition that you receive through your fellowship with Jesus and your heavenly Father that will guard you from having a negative complaining nature. And your face will begin to transform, your whole appearance become to transforming, and you get excited and happy about living and it gives you power to break through some of the challenges that we do get in this life. If you say, Lord, help me, put your hand on your heart. Pray this simple little prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sin. Forgive me for complaining. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Give me a cheerful disposition. <laughs> Fill me with joy and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now on these Wednesdays, we always honor the Lord with our giving. And I want to encourage you to go online to lifechurchuk.org and, and, and give your offerings and tithes to the Lord. And the Lord bless you. And I'm so grateful for all of you that even though we haven't been able to meet for quite some time, you've kept honoring the Lord with your giving. And I know that's one of the best ways to live. For Ginny and I, we get excited to honor the Lord in this way. And we believe that God watches over us as we honor Him with our giving. And the Lord bless you in your giving. And have a wonderful week this week. Join me online for the daily devotions. And this coming Sunday, I'm going to preach on good success. And I believe it's going to bless you in a powerful way. The Holy Spirit's put this message in my heart. And I'm looking forward to the whole month of August to preach about, uh, oh, about the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, oh my goodness, is like a high tower and the righteous run into it and are saved. We're going to have a phenomenal month of August. Virginia and I are going to share with you shortly. Uh, about this week we're going to share with you about coming together and how we're going to do that so have a wonderful week we love you and god bless you